Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is journalist Mark Gregorian, formerly of Yerevan, currently in London with the BBC World Service. Mark, welcome to CivilNet. Uh, I can hear you. That's okay. Thank you. Um, Mark, I want to talk about news coverage of non-critical top superpower countries. We're in Armenia. It's election season. Does the BBC care? Does the world media care? How do you think all of that is perceived? Well, you know, I can't say about the whole world because it's much wider than the BBC and there are very many different um, TV, radio and media companies. Nobody but what I can, say, that at what the I can say is that, yes, of course, presidential elections in a post-Soviet country are a very important event and they are very important in, in very many cases and aspects. And obviously the BBC cares about the Armenian elections and is closely following what's going on in Armenia on the political field as well as, you know, basically in economy, in everyday life. We are trying to follow that and uh, to cover on the merit, obviously. If uh, the outcome of the elections is more or less predictable, obviously they will be less covered than when the outcome is less predictable because journalism in general is about less predictability and the more there is sort of um, you know uh, uh, an issue there the more it becomes interesting how about the way that armenia is perceived generally politically with russia going off to the right to, to more towards it seems authoritarianism is Armenia still brushed with the same brush stroke that, you know, this whole part of the world, not much to cover, you kind of know what's going to happen. Is that the perspective? Well, you know, uh, no. I would divide your question into two different parts. One part would be that, uh, is Armenia painted with the same brush as Russia? No, it is not. You know, Russia is one of the big countries, big powers. It's the country where the president is serving his third, actually, um, uh, term in power. The country is overgoing now a very important period of uh, sort of moving this way or that way, moving towards reforms or towards screwing the country a little bit more. So it's, it's different. Armenia obviously is different. Armenia has a completely different view in, in, in the world's eyes. Uh, it is viewed not as uh, 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 an oil providing country, obviously, but as, you know, a country which has very serious issue with its neighbor, Azerbaijan. And uh, what's going on there, how this issue is uh, um, moving and, and will it be resolved or not. There is another issue which is uh, uh, with Turkey and, and also the world is very closely following that. Economically, it's not an easy time for the world, and it's not an easy time for such an open economy like Armenia's economy is. So there's a third issue of um, people, um, many leaving the country, and et cetera, et cetera. So you see, the agendas are completely different. Russian agenda and Armenian agenda are seen as different in, I mean, in, in the United Kingdom, uh, at least. And and. And what about the, the way in which our politics is perceived? Um, never mind that we don't get the same oil credits as other countries, but is our politics perceived as equally problematic, not reform-oriented necessarily? Or do we still get the benefit of the doubt? Well, you know, uh, when we're talking about the British perspective, obviously uh, there is less interest in uh, the Armenian politics unless it is not issue related. In general, the interest from Britain is issue related more than, you know, country related or politics related. So if there is an issue, obviously it becomes more interesting. If there isn't, obviously it's less interesting. We can criticize the media for this approach. We can say that the media should care more about good news, but that's how the situation is in the media worldwide, and we cannot do anything with it at this moment. Maybe one day in the future, but not now. Is there, from your perspective, you're from Armenia, you know Armenia, you know the Armenian media, you know the environment, is there 
are there things that we could be doing here in Armenia that would help us come into the spotlight more often? You know, sitting in London, do you say, oh, if they only, what? So that we're not so, I don't know, fourth and well, fifth on the agenda. Again, let me divide your question into two. First of all, I would like the things to be so calm that there wouldn't be any big issues to appear on the world agenda in the media. That's a good perspective. Otherwise, we understand. You want peace. Yes. Otherwise, you know, uh, well, uh, talking about the Armenian media, the Armenian media environment and Armenian journalism, I would like to see a bit more of a uh, professional approach, uh, a deeper approach to the issues, because what I know and what has developed in the Armenian journalism, it's becoming more and more of uh, sort of press conferences oriented journalism. No. <laughs> and uh, uh, yes, or <laughs> and. Uh, there are a lot of reports, journalistic reports nowadays, when, you know, uh, someone says um, something and that's being widely reported all over the media. Uh, but is there a, an event? Had there been something happening? Mark, does all of that impact how the international media reads us? In other words, we know why that's bad for the domestic development process. But as a result of that, is there is it possible to say the international media, therefore, is less interested because they don't really get the, the nitty gritty, the real content to follow up on? How does this irresponsible it's, journalistic process here impact what you do out there? Well, obviously, there is a correlation. If you have a brilliant journalist reporting about brilliant stuff, finding out absolutely you know incredible people going deep into the very the very depth of the country raising issues reporting about uh, ecology about uh, um, about um, the well-being of ordinary people obviously if it's brilliantly reported it will come it must come to the attention of the world media if it's not reported as brilliant as we would uh, um, uh, think of it. Obviously, it will be lost a little bit in translation, in uh, uh, moving to the big screens. You know, uh, there are big stories, and the big stories have to be reported in a way that they are big. Obviously, the, the, the international media, the BBC, different BBC, different outlets, starting from BBC Persian, ending with BBC Russian, BBC Turkish, Azeri, Uzbek, Kyrgyz, Ukrainian services. They all are very interested in, in what's going on in the post-Soviet space. So if there is something to be presented with, it goes ahead. Are if there... not, then we are facing difficulty in appearing on the world media. But anyway... Are there you know, red flag topics that are most interesting are environmental activists, for example, the, the, the rallying around the environment issue. Is that something, if properly presented, would be of more interest? Of course it would be. I mean, uh, this is, this, but I, I told you about this issue, and I would insist that the environmental activism now in Armenia can become a very interesting case for the media, both for the mainstream media and for a lot of uh, uh, smaller outlets, because it's so powerful that it really changes things, changes the direction in which things are going in the country. So it is something to be very seriously considered. So uh, yes, yes, take it as a hint, go and work on it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Mark Gregorian of the BBC World Service in London. Thank you for watching CivilNet.